imagine that all of these techniques here I've talked about are happening in the large blood vessels, okay? But yet we know in our blood vessel, in our circulatory system, the micro vessels, which are the very small resistance vessels, the capillaries, the arterioles, and the venules, all of those are extremely important in terms of uh, whether somebody is going to get uh, a heart attack or a stroke or have any kind of uh, consequence of damaged blood vessels. So the micro vessels are extremely important and they've got their own specific tests, okay, which look again at the function of the, of the micro vessels. Now, when you think about it, and this is, an, this is a point which is worth writing down, Microvessels have a greater surface area than our large vessels. So, so far I've talked about the carotid artery, I've mentioned the radial artery, the femoral artery, the brachial, the brachial carotid, etc. So, the microvessels make up a greater surface area than those large arteries combined. So that means that if you've got somebody with high blood pressure or high cholesterol, diabetes, etc., it's, it's more likely that those risk factors are going to impact upon the microvessel than the large vessels. And quite often in research studies, and certainly the research that I've done uh, in clinical populations, I found that it's actually the microvessels which are uh, causing a lot of the uh, problems for, for patients. They, they become damaged by, by the risk, cardiovascular risk factors, by inflammation, um, and they are the ones where you see all of the dysfunction occurring and they have then an impact on, on uh, blood pressure and upon actually causing damage to the large vessels. So there's a lot of evidence to suggest that it's the microvessels that release various inflammatory proteins or cytokines which damage the large vessels. Now just quickly uh, on some of the measures that we can incorporate in the microvasculature. So we can look at uh, several techniques. Um, the gold standard technique is to use laser Doppler imaging. Okay, so laser Doppler imaging. And again, this is a technique which is, hopefully you can read my writing, it's not the most neatest today, but laser Doppler imaging uh, is a technique whereby you can place uh, a, a, a laser Doppler onto any part of the body and you can stimulate the microvessels to release nitric oxide. And quite often the stimulus that you use is acetylcholine and sodium nitroprusside. Okay, now sodium nitroprusside and acetyl acetylcholine are both vasoactive agents. Acetylcholine directly stimulates NO release by acting upon um, muscarinic receptors on the endothelium. Okay, and the sodium nitroprusside works directly on the smooth muscle, so it actually binds to smooth muscle receptor. Um, some receptors and causes the smooth muscle um, directly on smooth muscle to relax and causes the smooth muscle to relax. Okay, so these are two agents. Quite commonly, they're actually iontophoresis. So there's a technique called iontophoresis, which pushes these drugs using an electrical current into the forearm of the blood vessel or any part of the body. And the laser Doppler scans that part and looks at the changes in blood flow in, in response to those two agents. And obviously, as the blood vessels uh, open up in response to those vasoactive agents, you get an increase in blood flow, which we can see mapped out with the laser Doppler uh, imager as well. Now there is another technique as well which can look at microvascular blood flow and it basically if I draw a hand one two three four five just make sure it's got five fingers it's not an alien hand. Now at the ends of our uh, fingers are the nail folds okay so if I got the draw the nails here and then we've got folded nail, nail folds which have got folded capillaries and we can actually use a microscope or a capillaroscoscope microscope or I'll actually put capillaroscope capillo, actually it should only be one P I think capillaros c 
micro, I hope I've spelt that right. Please forgive me if I've spelt that incorrectly. Um, but you can use a microscope or a capillaroscoscope um, to actually visualize the nail folds, capillaries, and you put a little bit of oil onto here. So you put a little bit of what's known as immersion oil, and then you, you put the, the finger underneath the microscope and then you look at the structure uh, of the capillaries and you can identify whether the, the capillaries are actually uh, formed correctly, whether there's any uh, abnormalities, whether there's any uh, capillaries which are completely damaged in terms of their structure, and then you can class them into certain grades and characterize the extent of microvascular abnormalities. Now, capillaroscopy actually is a technique which is um, not so commonly used now as it was before because we've got these newer techniques such as laser doppler imaging uh, but it's the point is that it's very important for us to examine microvascular uh, endothelial function as well as large vessel endothelial function as well and the best research studies uh, and the best intervention studies actually incorporate elements of all so they'll have they'll have an examination of microvascular function they'll have an examination of large vessel endothelial function and they'll also look at the uh, the structure of the artery as well to see what kind of changes changes are happening and that's a, a very um, all-encompassing global uh, measurement of vascular disease so Today really is a bit of the theory behind uh, these techniques. What I want to do is to get you to actually visualize these techniques in the laboratory. So please stick around for the upcoming parts where we'll be down in the laboratory uh, and we'll talk through some of these uh, assessments of uh, endothelial function. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you soon.